Hello and welcome dear students and uh, today we are going to be discussing about gestosis scoring uh, which is a, a predictive factor for uh, development of preeclampsia. Now uh, my detailed notes on hypertensive disorders of pregnancy is already available in my complete course package and also in the in the package on uh, major topics in obstetrics as many of you of course would be knowing and have already subscribed to it. Uh, as a, a notification I'd like to just mention it once again that everything that I uh, you know uh, add to my notes is automatically reflected on all those students who once prescribed uh, once have already subscribed to my course so anybody who's uh, taken my course any additions so on with my uh, you know related to any recent developments in the same thing are uh, well, if they are added they are reflected even to the old students. So please do not worry about any latest things being added up. They'll automatically be opened up in your package, which you would see if the notes are being changed. If new guidelines are being added, you can automatically check them in your notes if they are updated. Now, and of course, I send the notification every time I do this. So don't worry about that at all. Now, uh, getting back to the topic. <clears throat> Previously, we had talked about a certain tests which are done to find out whether this patient is at high risk of developing preeclampsia or not. And most of those tests like placental growth factor or SFLT uh, you know, ratio with placental growth factor, they are uh, mostly predictive of preterm preeclampsia. All right. So term preeclampsia, mostly they are not very sensitive of. Plus, if the rule of the ratio is coming less, OK, the value is coming uh, at a, uh, below the cutoff. Then in that case, of course, it, it's a rule out factor that at least it's not going to develop preeclampsia in any one to two weeks to come. So that was the predictive value of those tests which were being conducted, be it first trimester screen, screening or be it the SFLT and placental growth factor or the placental growth factor alone. But today I'm going to be discussing with you something called as gestosis factor in which, uh, gestosis scoring in which, you know, this... Um, uh, this thing is not done. Uh, a test is not done. This is basically uh, kind of uh, dependent on uh, the history of the patient and history and probably examination of the patient at the max to tell you whether this patient is at a high risk of development of preeclampsia or not. Gestosis scoring has been included in the FOXI clinical guidelines uh, GCPR 2019. So any one of you who wants to study about it, you can always study. But uh, uh, I've just uh, included this uh, short window over here from uh, Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology in India. It's there in FOXI guidelines as well. Uh, this will tell you about which factors in the history of the patient are high risk factors and where do we start with the low risk factors. So can you see the scoring of one? This is the score. These are the risk factors. So basically we're not doing a test on the patient. There is no chemical test. There is no, uh, you know, uh, serum being taken from the patient. This is, uh, there's no algorithm which is being plotted. This is not a test. This is just in the probably a low resource setting like in India. This is a better method of screening whether this patient is at a high risk of development of preeclampsia or not. So it's very, very easy for us sitting in our clinic, you know, in OPDs to manage, to manage or at least to predict these patients. Okay. So if this scoring you, you remember, then you will be able to at least tell whether this patient is at a high risk or not. So there is a scoring of one. <clears throat> the scoring of one tells you that this is a mild, she's at a mild risk of developing, uh, developing, see over here, it's a mild risk score. So she has, is at a mild risk for development of preeclampsia. Two is at a moderate risk and of course three is at a high risk for development of preeclampsia. So what I do is that I always start with the high risk factors first. So let's see what are the high risk factors. If the patient gives you a history of any chronic disorder in the patient, okay, like she's been having uh, pre-gestational diabetes or chronic hypertension or chronic kidney disease or autoimmune. The patient is an autoimmune, uh, is, is already suffering from an autoimmune disease like SLE, APLA or rheumatoid arthritis or she is already taking tre treatment for some hypertensive disorder of pregnancy. That means she's absolutely at high risk of development of preeclampsia. So all these factors which you can see, pre-gestational diabetes, chronic hypertension, mental disorders I forgot, inherited or acquired thrombophilias, any maternal chronic renal disease or autoimmune disease or pregnancy with assisted reproductive disorders. Now this is very very important. So a patient who's had a history of uh, surrogacy okay or uh, you know oocyte donation then this patient is also at a high risk for uh, you know development of preeclampsia. So they all get a score of three. Then we talk about the ones who are at a 
moderate uh, you know score of more moderate risk score of development of preeclampsia but we do not have many over there for example maternal hypothyroidism family history of preeclampsia gestational diabetes mellitus or she's an obese patient or a patient with multifetal pregnancy or she had hypertensive disease in her previous pregnancy so family history of hypertensive disorders previous pregnancy with a history you know of, of with a history of hypertensive disorders or gestational diabetes she is having obese patient multifetal pregnancy these are these belong to a moderate risk factor for development of uh, preeclampsia not gestational hypertension preeclampsia and yes uh, like i told you before these tests were more sensitive in telling whether she is going to develop pre preterm preeclampsia they were not very sensitive in, in developing whether we we can predict term preeclampsia or not which is also equally important to us okay so in that case uh, this one is better off because now here here we don't even have this uh, you know disadvantage of getting a tests done so low resource setting will help us just by the you know history and examination we can at least at least score the patient and at the same time we can roughly say in general if she has a his, you know tendency of developing preeclampsia as a whole no preterm or term preeclampsia so now over here what are the low risk factors but still risk factors for development of preeclampsia for example excessive weight gain during pregnancy some chronic vascular disease mean arterial pressure of more than 85 conceived with ivf or icsi okay not oocyte uh, donation no nor uh, surrogacy inter pregnancy interval is more than 7 years polycystic ovary syndrome a family history of cardiovascular disease women born women born as small just for gestation that's pre you know pretty long to trace back short duration of uh, cohabitation you know she conceived immediately and then it's seen primary gravidas obese with more than bmi more than 30 bmi more than 35 was 22 as a risk factor bmi more than 30 is one as a risk factor maternal anemia age either very low that is less than 19 19 years or more than 35 years there Uh, you know one as the score so if you can just find you know when you're writing down the history you know all these points she's primary gravida she's multi gravida whether she has a history of uh, preeclampsia and previous pregnancy she had a history of diabetes she's currently diabetic she was diabetic she's on she's got a kidney disease she's got <clears throat> autoimmune disorder whether she had an ivf or icsi pregnancy or she has own you know oocyte donation and uh, surrogacy whether she was she was a she has a history of pcos and then she got conceived she had small history of conception and whether you know she was uh, uh, what what is her bmi and uh, if she's already on any hypertensive drugs so all these things you know just by the history of the patient already all you have to do is just score it whether she is and if she's like you know maybe she's more than 35 years and she's also conceived by uh this thing uh, by uh, ivf or icsi she all automatically goes to a higher risk category of development of preeclampsia though it's not written over here that you add the score but it's just uh, written over here that you know these patients will fall into a higher risk category for development of preeclampsia so you'll have to keenly watch them out and you'll have to take every reading of blood pressure as important and uh, you know a uh, any reading of uh, more, more than 130 90 should alert you into calling her more often uh, asking her to keep a profile of blood pressure even at home and uh, follow up very rigorously in the opd and two such readings of high bp should should uh, you know put you on caution to start her on antihypertensives and look forward to her uh, biological test serum uh, serum markers and of course ultrasound with doppler so uh, <clears throat> today's class i've tried to make you understand why these tests are more beneficial as compared to the you know the other scoring of uh, and prediction of preeclampsia but in the examination if it asks if it is asked that predictors of preeclampsia my dear you have to include both the serum markers first trimester screening and this uh, uh, score on uh, gestational uh, gestosis score on just history and examination alone because in low resource setting like in india this is going to be really really beneficial to all of us so uh, with this i conclude my session and uh, hopefully this week i'll be uh, uh, announcing a live class pretty soon so just watch out for my uh, my app 
the the link is given in the description below please watch out uh, and just download my app every announcement that i do i make it on my app and it's on also there on my facebook page so just be connected with me and uh, let me know you want any further classes or you want any explanation you want any uh, further addition in any topic i would be more than happy to help you thank you so much